when I found Elm for me, it was like the promised land. <laughs> so um, everything just works. Everything just worked. Yeah. yeah. Until it, it was not working anymore <laughs> for some reasons. But yes. But but the main idea of, of the Elm architecture is that you have like three parts. Like you have your model or your state, you have your view and you have your or your render function and you have your update. So sometimes we say Elm architecture, sometimes we say model view update. Um, We're referring to the same thing, basically. Yes. Um, and I, in, uh, lately I, I, I'm used to saying MVU, so model view update. I know that you are uh, really yeah, I'm a bit more into about, saying the Elm architecture. Yeah. So it, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same. Um, or it is exactly the same, not pretty much. So what do we have? We have this model. Yes. Or the state, right? Elmish and the Elm architecture. The first thing you ever think about is the first part of the problem you try to solve in user interface is the model, is the data model you're trying to uh, to manipulate on a web page. So you have some data, so you model it with a type. Sometimes you call it the model, but sometimes you call it the state. I prefer state because that's the state of the application and the model is the type of that data. So you model it using a type, which is yeah, the, the data you want to keep track of while the application yeah. is running. When we have this model, when we have those types, the state of our application that we are representing, um, this current state of our application is then used to declaratively render a view, right? Yes. So when you have a when you have an instance of your model type, when you have your data, it is basically a snapshot which then the view can take it and render the user interface out of it. So the view does not know how the data is being updated. It just takes snapshots of the updated states and from each state it can make up a view. Yes. So, and I think this is the big difference when, when working with something like Angular 1, for example, where is there, where we have this two-way data binding. So you change something in a model and uh, automatically like the view is updated or it updates itself, it updates the DOM. I think this is pretty different here because conceptually we just render a new view if we get a new um, state yeah. of our model. Conceptually right? the data, uh, the, it, the, uh, the, ar the architecture does not care about how the data uh, is implemented about the changes in the data. It only knows yeah. it only knows that it can render a new user interface when it has new data. So the yeah. difference between something like Angular is that Angular uses uh, more like observables. So when you yes. change when when you make mutable when you make changes to some mutable value, that value is an observable to which Angular then watches and based on that it will update the a part of the view. Here. Here yes. it does not it does not listen for a part of the model, which then uh, updates the view. It just listens to the whole model and rebuilds the view based on what the model currently is. So every update you get a new view. It it does not okay. know anything about updating the data. It only knows about I have a model. I can render a user interface from it. Yeah. And it's pretty performant, so yeah, we can it's talk not about like the whole DOM is recreated. No, so no, we we'll talk about performance just, in, in uh, we can yeah. talk about it in detail. But basically, it's not actually re it's not actually destroying the screen or re-rendering it. Yeah, that's that will be pretty obvious. But it's more on a conceptual level, right? Sorry, it's more on a conceptual level. It's more conceptual level, exactly. So yeah. something uh, the data updated, the the user interface is yeah. updated as well. Yeah. So then when the user clicks something on something, so it clicks a button or, or something, so we, we, we registered a view handler for, for some um, actions the user can take, the, the um, architecture or this kind of architecture then sends a mes message to, ah, I can't use this, uh, sends a message to a runtime or to a mailbox. So this is actually the runtime where all the action is taking place, but this is pretty much transparent through the, um, for the user. Yeah, right? that's the library. So, so that's what the yeah. library gives you. It, it, it tells you, well, give me a model type, like the type definition of a model, give me a view function, give me an update function, and I will wrap everything in this mailbox architecture. Yes. And so this, this mailbox then just forwards um, 
the, the message, so this button was clicked or something, to this update function. So it's a, just a function that gets the current state of the model. So it gets the current state of the application mm -hmm. and it gets this message. And then it can just decide what to do. And but what's the message it, exactly? It, it's pretty much just an information, right? Yeah. So yeah, I, I will always need to like uh, get into details of, of this because we have, we talk a lot about the Elm architecture, but we skip through a lot of things, especially the messages, which can be confusing because messages can be, mm -hmm. I don't know, like uh, messages queues, which is yeah. kind of the, which is kind of why they're called messages here because the runtime is a message queue. Every message it gets, yes. it has to process it, right? But a message yes. is basically um, a data, another data type next to the model that defines events that happened in your in your user in, in your user interface yes. interaction. So if um if a click is is if a button is clicked, that doesn't that doesn't convey any information. What does it mean for a button to be clicked to in 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 in, in relevance to the actual problem? Well, if if say if we're building a, a counter. If you click on the increment button, then you have an event that is triggered, which is the increment yes. event responsible for update, responsible for incrementing the current count of the state, which is something that the update has to do. So messages are convey information about the events that have that have occurred from user interactions. Yeah. For now, from yes. just user interactions. Yeah, and it pretty much yeah it, it it and it also or they also convey like the intention yeah, of the user. Yeah, the intention, which is intention, because when we get to the update, we don't care about which button was clicked. We only care about yes. which event was triggered, yes. which event occurred, yeah. and based on that, we can make up the next snapshot of the model, which can then be given exactly, which can then be given back to the view to to generate even more even more messages slash events. And that's how you get yes. the f the circle full. Yeah, but still, so so. W but what I think it's important here is okay. It's F sharp, it's, so everything is immutable. So, but we we return a new model. So we don't mutate this model. We return a new model, which is then used to uh, declaratively render the view, which can then be blah 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 blah. Yeah. And we have this nice circle yeah. here. But this circle is not enough, of course. Because um, not, we can't really do anything here except for like changing the DOM, right? So yes. we can't really create any side effects. We can't do any uh, HTTP calls. We can't do any random, get any random number or do anything. Well, in so, F you actually could. It's it's not that restrictive yeah. in, 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 this, yeah. in this case. In Elm you could. In Elm you could. In Elm itself it's you could. more of a go to the, I don't know, system clock and do stuff with it. But yeah. 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 So, so what what the, what the update is also doing it also returns another type of message, right? Which is uh, which are the commands, and these commands are then also be fed into back into the runtime. Yes. Um, and the runtime then can actually decide what to do with those commands. Yeah. So when you see this uh, full circle of model view update. Everything is perfect. So you have a you define the type, the model. You define the you define the message, and everything goes through the view, the runtime, the update. Everything is perfect. But with this perfection, you you can't do you can't do much, you know, because you can only change the only thing that can change yeah. for the user from the user interface perspective is the view being re-rendered based on new state. But Whoop you can't really do anything outside of this of this circle. So what commands provide, it's they tell you, okay, I, I, can, I can break out of the circle, I can do whatever I want, and from whatever mm -hmm. that is, I can dispatch more, more events. So everything that happens out, that, uh, everything that happens outside of the view uh, context is a command which can do all sorts of things and as a side effect of that, send messages to the runtime. So if you do HTTP yes. calls, that will be you. Ha, you think about which events can be triggered from an HTTP call. Well, you have two events: the that the request has been initiated and the request has been ended. So an yeah. HTTP command would dispatch two messages back into the runtime and back into the update, updating the model, getting a new view. That's the yeah. that's uh, yeah. It's a summary of how it works.